Hello gamers, this is Sai, and welcome back to Which Way Games. Now what's the greatest story ever told? And with that being said, let's get on with the video. When it comes to storytelling in the world of gaming, there have been tales of heroic deeds, tragic events, and some connections to supernatural beings. However, in some video games of the past, where gaming was in its infancy, these games would have somewhat of a small story, but not as complex as video games today. Over time, video games would become more story-driven while keeping gameplay as its main core dynamic, but allow for gamers to live out adventures that looked back on with fondness. Now there's one franchise that took the world of storytelling to a whole new level, and this would be the Final Fantasy series, for some gamers have a special place in their hearts. Now Final Fantasy didn't start off as the legendary series it has become. Back when Square were under threat of bankruptcy, they decided to release a game that would be their final swan song before finally closing their doors forever. Series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi and his team got to work creating Final Fantasy. Deciding that an RPG style of gameplay was the best way forward, the important decision of having a unique but endearing story had to coincide with this style of turn-based gameplay. And this decision proved to be hugely successful, with Final Fantasy receiving critical acclaim from gamers and critics, thus saving Square from bankruptcy and changing the world of gaming forever. Following the outstanding success of Final Fantasy, more sequels would follow, each telling a different story, but having a theme intertwined into each one such as Final Fantasy V, which was more mythical, magical dragons and sword-wielding pirates, but then there was Final Fantasy VI, which was darker in tone, favouring technology over the magic, although eventually the world of magic did make a return at some point throughout Final Fantasy VI. Now Square seemed to have hit after hit with each release, however there was one game in the Final Fantasy franchise that took the world by storm when first release all the way back in 1997. This would be Final Fantasy VII, which for some gamers is the best in the series. So like always, let's go back to where it all started. Development for Final Fantasy VII began shortly after the release of Final Fantasy VI, all the way back in 1994, and was planned to be released for the Super Nintendo. However, with much of the team working the incredible Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VII found its development halted, allowing for Chrono Trigger to become the masterpiece that it's known for. I love Chrono Trigger and I've yet to unlock all 13 endings, but time will tell. Eventually, development Final Fantasy VII resumed in late 1995. However, Square were at a crossroads when it came to choosing between two upcoming consoles, the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation. Each would be given the task of bringing the world of Final Fantasy into the world of 3D. However, the Square wanted to create a game that was not only visually stunning, but allowed for a more in-depth gaming experience. Square opted for the PlayStation that was more than capable of dealing with some of the technical issues the Nintendo 64 had. Both consoles are fantastic, each with a huge library of games. However, this loss of Final Fantasy VII didn't hinder the success of Nintendo 64, as Nintendo themselves owned huge gaming franchises. Now with the PlayStation being the console of choice for Square, the initial step into 3D meant more work for game developers. However, when combining 3D character models or 2D rendered backgrounds, this allowed for a more realistic presentation, bringing the world to life and creating the memorable gaming experience I mentioned earlier. With a budget of estimated at being $40 million, Sakaguchi proposed the Materia system as a way for more character customization. The job system from early Final Fantasy games was replaced with this fully customizable system that could be tweaked between battles. And it was in late January 1997 that Final Fantasy released, changing history for gamers old and new. And like always, let's go back to the past to see how Final Fantasy 7 was advertised. Beyond the edge of reality lies a story of ultimate conquest, a story of war and friendship, a story of a love that can never be and a hatred that always was. And now, the most anticipated epic adventure of the year will never come to a theater near you. Final Fantasy VII. The story of Final Fantasy VII begins on a planet known as Gaia that's not much different from Earth. 
technology and the life energy within the planet coexist allowing for the inhabitants to create all manner of technological advancements. From these feats of technology, two materials known as Mako Materia are formed that can perform miracles and granting wisdom. However, an evil corporation known as Shinra is harvesting the life energy of the planet, draining it and causing harmful effects to the inhabitants. Feeling that Shinra has to be stopped, a small rebel group known as Avalanche step forward in a bid to save the planet from destruction. And within this group is a mercenary for hire, who used to be with the elite military unit called Soldier. And this merc with a buster sword is known as Cloud Strife. With a plan to take down the first of Shinra's factories, Avalanche head to Midgar to begin the epic journey that would change the fate of the planet forever. Gameplay has gamers controlling Cloud Strife as he begins his epic journey in pursuit of Sephiroth and uncovering his past in his fantastic JRPG. The main gameplay follows the same format as some of the early Final Fantasy games, having a party of characters that could be upgraded with new weapons and abilities before having to deal with turn-based battles that would be mixed together with exploration and the narrative of the story. The main character Cloud is instantly recognisable with his blonde hair that at certain angles looks like the main title screen. The life force known as Materia can be used to upgrade characters, their weapons and abilities that make dealing with enemies all that easier. Being able to use spells that usually have an elemental effect to them allowed for a diversity in gameplay. For example, robotic enemies would be weak to electrical attacks but not so much physical. As well as magical spells, there was a limit break ability that some gamers either thought this was a last ditch effort to survive or the ultimate finishing move. Now all these powers are great, but one thing that Final Fantasy is known for is the summoning ability of huge powerful creatures that come in all shapes and sizes, taking influences from mythology around the world. Now usually I've come back to the story, but not wanting to ruin anything for future gamers, all I can say is be prepared for the shock of a lifetime. Final Fantasy VII charmed gamers with the great graphics, addictive gameplay and amazing story that had gamers on the edge of their seats as it unfolded before their very eyes. Following on from the success of Final Fantasy VII, there were multiple spin-offs within the series, including a film that was set sometime after the events of the actual game. Over time, more sequels would follow, with the likes of Final Fantasy VIII, IX and X, which all proved hugely popular with gamers. And at the time of this video, there are 15 Final Fantasy games, each bringing a new story as well as a theme to the table. But let's not forget the other Final Fantasy games that came before, each with compelling stories to be told. The thing I love about Final Fantasy VII, as well as the rest of the series, is how gameplay combined with the story really draws gamers in, making them feel a part of the virtual world and witnessing the events that transpire. I do love Final Fantasy V, that combines the world of magic, pirates and dragons. Overall, Final Fantasy VII is a fun and addictive game to play, with its great combat system and a complex but endearing story that gave gamers a memorable experience while playing. And now with the Final Fantasy VII Remake out at the time of this video, I'll be interested to see what new things Square will bring to the table. Now that the remake is going to be released in chapters, maybe the style of release will delve further into the past of Cloud. Or maybe there'll be some sort of what if re episodes that could change the events of the entire game. Hopefully in time, another legendary JRPG called Chrono Trigger will get a remake, which if gamers haven't played, I highly recommend. Anyway, come back next time where a driver has to compete in racing circuits for his sun-kissed beaches with crystal blue waters, all in a bid to impress his lady. Thank you so much for watching and see you next game. Oh, <laughs>